the way I am going to read your ass on Tuesday. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today we are going to be talking about Bonnie Bennett. Now before I begin, once again, I do have to say my fan is on because it's hot so you might hear it. Oh, <laughs> you might hear it in the background and there's nothing that I can do about that. And the one time that I decide to film at a time that's not three in the morning, they're doing construction right above me. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But just so you know. So back to back to Bonnie Bennett. So for those of you who do not know, Bonnie Bennett uh, is played by Cat Graham and she is a main character character or was a main character on the show The Vampire Diaries. I have been watching The Vampire Diaries because I wanted to make a video on it. Like I made a video on Teen Wolf and on Pretty Little Liars. I couldn't get through it. Um, and first of all, this is not my first time watching The Vampire Diaries. I used to watch it on and off when I was a kid. Um, I remember watching seasons like six to eight while it was airing and then I watched like the rest of them like it was choppy. I was in an, in some episodes, out some episodes. So then I decided okay I want to watch the full, I want to watch the full thing because I never read any of the books because in the first books they said that they went to Robert E. Lee High School and then I said no ma'am. I said this is not a book for me. So I don't know <laughs> if I will be making a full video on the Vampire Diaries because it was fucking annoying. I don't know if I'll be able to get through it. That's how annoyed I am. And before I begin, I just want to say Kat Graham, I love her. Okay, she's classy, she's booked, she's busy, she has jobs, plural, S, word to Nicki Minaj. She has things that the rest of the cast of the Vampire Diaries don't have. And I, th that, that's just on that, like the clown comes back to bite. Um, so there's that. So I don't even want to make this about her. I want to make this about the character Bonnie Bennett. This is going to be a rant, by the way. Um, I want to make this about the character Bonnie Bennett because that character was done so terribly by Julie Pleck and company. And this, I'm not the first person to say this and I won't be the last, but I will say something about it because it annoyed me to no end. So there's gonna be two parts of this video. The first part of the video, I will be using the Kent test to talk about Bonnie Bennett just because my, if I rant, there needs to be some structure to this rant because then I'll just go off the rails and I'm, I'll not remember what I want to say. So I'll talk about Bonnie Bennett using the Kent test. And then for the second part of the video, I will be talking about that woman, that white woman, Julie Pleck, and what she did. So first of all, what is the Kent test? If you have taken any like, ooh, <laughs> if you've taken any like women in Phil, any like woman, women based course um, in university, because this, this is where I learned about it in university, you'll have heard of the Bechdel test. The Bechdel test was inspired by Alison Bechdel's 1985 tongue in cheek comic strip. The rule, which became a basic me measure to see if women are fairly represented in a film, it is also referred to as the Bechdel Wallace test. Allison credited the idea for the test to her friend Liz Wallace. So in order for a film to pass the Bechdel test, it has to meet three criteria. It mu must have at least two female characters, they must both have names, and they must talk to each other about something other than a man. This test was good for what it was good for, but as we evolve as a society, new things come in, and this is where we get the Kent test. So the Kent test is written by Clarkisha Kent, I follow her on Twitter, she's amazing. She is 
is a writer she talks about different stuff culture all that stuff you should go follow her the ken test is a test designated to determine whether a film or any other piece of media has provided the audience with an adequate representation of femmes of color this is meant to encourage discussion on what good representation can look like for femmes of color and it is not the end all be all test but it is a good place to start and as i said it was created by clarkisha kent so i am going to be using this test there are points a to g on this test and I'm going to be using it on Miss Bonnie Bennett and why I can only use this test on Bonnie Bennett is because Bonnie Bennett was the only black person the only main black person on the Vampire Diaries. Now as I said before this test doesn't necessarily uh, entail everything like it doesn't deal with uh, LGBTQIA uh, issues but I just for the for the sake of conversation just to center this rant a little bit I am going to be using this test. Now it says that you're supposed to like start from zero and then go up but I feel like zero is the bare minimum. Zero should be is the bare minimum for this damn show. So I'm going to be starting at zero and I will add a point if it meets the criteria and I will be subtracting a point if it does not meet the criteria so at the end of this video it could this this could have a negative score not could it will have a negative score and I am going to tell you why in a not not very eloquent manner at this point but it is what it is because I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired all the time first point let's get into it must not solely be a walking stereotype and or trope. Bonnie Bennett was 100% a walking stereotype. Bonnie Bennett was the magical negro. Literally, because she had magical powers and everybody went to her for everything. Now if you're not familiar with the magical negro trope, it's essentially where in a lot of media you'll just find this black person is the go-to for all of these white people's troubles or they're like they'll just have this innate need that black people don't have because black people don't like we don't desire to save white people. Um, but in these shows when it comes to these certain stereotypes these black people, usually women, will have this innate need to just go helping all of these white people to figure out all of their problems. And then you're just sat back like, huh? What is happening? I haven't seen the leg the Legacies show um, with that racist man, Matt Davis. But why does Alaric Saltzman just have an abundance of Bonnie Bennett blood for whenever he needs it? Do we not see the implications of having a white man, played by a racist man, but having a white man have an abundance of a black woman's blood? Where? Who, who is doing this? Julie Pluck is doing this. But just for rhetorical, it's a rhetorical question. What do we not see the issues in that? And also, the fact that they just tried to erase the fact that Damon was a Confederate soldier. They mentioned it, but then they were like, Damon left the war on principle. Okay, and this is a sub point. Why in all of these vampire stories do these vampires have to be in the Confederate Army? It was the same thing in my Twilight video. Jasper, these white women just keep writing these men uh, as vampires as being in the Confederate Army because Jasper was in the Confederate Army. He was proud of that shit. At least, the very least, Julie was like, Damon left based on principle. But... Like, why would you even have to include that? I understand if it was something that was mentioned in the books, but y'all changed so much shit from the books. And even if you wanted to keep it in there, there's like a smart way to subvert that and like actually make it a part of the story since you have a black woman um, a part of the cast. But also, 
Damon was a part of the Confederate Army and Damon would just find Bonnie to do all of his bidding anytime he wanted something done get Bonnie get Bonnie get Bonnie get Bonnie all of the white people were but there there's this like weird undertone that's not discussed that, like hey Damon was in the Confederate Army and he is constantly seeking out this black woman torturing her not only even this black woman this long line of Bennett women Bennett women who are black women um, he just keeps seeking out these women and making them do his bidding like huh well, well what are we doing here Julie and once again like this could have been a part of the book but they changed so much shit from the books that they could have reworked it if they really wanted to they didn't want to next point must have their own plot so that's a minus one that's that's minus one from the start <laughs> um next point point b must have their own plot slash narrative arc nope 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 everybody else had their own story everybody else had their own thing going on elena was doing whatever elena does stefan and damon were fighting over elena caroline had her own thing going on tyler had his own thing going on matt had his go own thing going on uh, jeremy had his own thing going on bonnie's life was just tied to everybody else in a way that did not make sense even after elena left even after nino Dobrev decided to leave I was like okay finally we'll see something here because like you have to but instead Julie Plath decided to write in more white characters to, st to tell their white stories while Bonnie Bennett was just left in the cold doing god knows what at that point like do you see the <laughs> do you see the blatant racism here like why can't Bonnie just have a story? Uh, the Bennett witches are literally in part responsible for immortality. Because they were in it, the, like they were used to create the immortals. And then you have, there was like, it was a clear setup. Like you have to actively avoid that story. You have to actively avoid Bonnie Bennett to not see the vision when it came to that storyline. Why was Bonnie's life about saving everybody else's life? When she came back, the. I don't even know one of the times that she came back because she died so many times which was um and that too imagine being Cat Graham on a TV show and every two seconds your character dies and you don't know if they're coming back imagine the stress that she pro she was probably experiencing I don't know that woman but it would stress me the fuck out especially going based off the way that you've been writing my character I'd be like damn do I have a job next season what is going on B Bonnie's arc was literally just dying for everybody else that's it. Everybody else had something to do. Everybody was chilling. Um, Bonnie had f friends. The two white girls who I'm not even sure were her friends because I don't think that they cared about her. But yeah, so must have their own plot slash narrative arc minus one. So we're at minus two. This is, this is where we're at. The first two points. We're already at minus two. 2. C. Must not solely be included in the narrative just for the purpose of holding down some male character and his story. She wasn't specifically used to hold down a male character on his in his story, but she was used to hold down well You could say that like Damon kind of got his redemption arc a little bit through Bonnie because at the end of the day he did kill her grand he, he was indirectly responsible for both her her mother's her mother being dead and her father being dead so you could say that and Jeremy Bonnie died to bring Jeremy back twice and he still ended up cheating on her with a ghost. So, I don't, I'm not too sure about this one. So, I am going to give it a 0.5 because it does not deserve the full point. 
um yes so we're now we're now at a 1.5 minus 1.5 D must not solely be included in the narrative to pop prop up a white female character. The worst thing that the writers ever did, in my opinion, and they did a lot of really bad things. The worst thing that they did is that whole season I can't was it season seven or eight well I think it was seven um where they in order to get rid of Nina Dobrev they tied Bonnie's life to the life of this white woman and that is when I had to tap out. That is when I said, you have lost your damn mind. That is when I realized, not even realized, but that's when it solidified for the fact that Elena is terrible. Elena is a mediocre character, if that. And this isn't even a slight on Nina Dobrev because I think Catherine is pretty badass. But what? It felt like um, Elena was trying to tell Bonnie, oh, I'm kind of doing you a favor by not letting one of my vampire boyfriends kill you so that you can live your life and so that I can come back. That's what it felt like. And I was like, Bonnie's been saving y'all asses for the past, from season one. From season one, Bonnie's been saving y'all. She doesn't even want to. She has this sick sense of like, the reverse white savior come I don't know I don't even know what that is but like she always she's always saving you if had had it not been for Bonnie all of you guys would have been dead a long time ago so why are we acting why are you acting like she's doing you a favor Bonnie had her mom her her dad came back for like one episode and died her mom came back for one episode and died her grandma died helping Damon do something and it's just like why are y'all acting like you did Bonnie Bennett a favor by staying alive and by Damon not killing her nonetheless Damon was fantasizing about killing her the entire time while she was alive so there's that why would you tie the life of the of this black woman to this white woman? Bonnie was literally a, an alcoholic for a short period of time. Bonnie was drinking. No one cared. Um, Damon and Bonnie got took to the prison world. Elena didn't give a didn't give a rat's ass. When Bonnie came back, Bonnie was like, "Oh, y'all been living it up." <laughs> y'all been living it up no one no one cared about me no one cared what i was doing and when she came back damon wanted her to play nice with fucking kai the man who tortured her uh, what are we doing and not even honestly not even too much on ian either because although y'all like to say that he's old and washed up and he doesn't have a job um he was one of the only ones protecting cat Graham. so i not too much on mr ian but yeah um so that is minus a point bonnie it, it, it felt like bonnie's entire existence was just there to prop up white characters and it made it worse because she was the only black girl on the show she was the only black person on the show and when i say that i know we had like i know we had periphery characters but all of those people consisted of her parents her family and the bennett witch line and also it also like irked me that all of the witches were black so it didn't bother me in the beginning but the fact that all of the witches were black and witches are like kind of known to be vampires like doormats and stuff that was that had severe like racist subtext and racist undertones so it was just all very jarring and confusing so uh d is also minus one e must not solely exist in the film slash piece of media for the purpose of fetish fetishization i can never say that word um reading the subtext was Bonnie hyper? No. No. No, actually, uh, no one in the show wanted Bonnie, apparently. Like, no sense. 
nobody on the on the show and this isn't this this, this is not me saying that fetish fetish <laughs> this is not me saying that fetishization is like a plus or positive in any way um that I'll, I'll give it that point they didn't they didn't fetishize bonnie what i'm saying is that like on the flip side nobody wanted like there was ben who used her there was jeremy who cheated on her with a ghost <laughs> um there was jamie who left like two episodes after and then there was enzo who ju who ju who stefan killed who they made stefan kill so why is like the most uh, to me at least like one of the most attractive and gorgeous people um why nobody want her or why does it seem that no one wants her julie julie but anyways it got ooh. <laughs> um it got its point for non fetish fetish fetishization i guess um we move point f must have at least one interaction with another woman or femme of color they were all her family so i guess yes that's two two points <laughs> Um, and below there's like a bonus point will be awarded if the second woman of color is not related to the first woman of color in any way shape or form um I don't think she interact from my knowledge from what I can remember uh she didn't interact with anybody of color that was not related to her there was Brie but I don't think she ever met Brie because Damon killed Brie um yeah no mm mm Cause she's also like she's the only black person in mystic falls so her family are the only other black people in mystic falls mm. mm -hmm. next um must not be the go-to character sacrifice in a film and or piece of media no uh-uh Bonnie was literally just out here sacrificing herself for these white people. Her grandmother died because of her need to sacrifice herself for these white people. Bonnie Bennett was out here stopping hellfire all on her own to save these white people people who did not give a damn about her because they did not even care Damon didn't even tell anybody that she was alive on the other side when he came back and he's supposed to be her best friend like how like how Elena spends more time crying for Damon than she does even thinking about Bonnie when Bonnie dies, when Bonnie has been dying for everybody. Bonnie died and came back and was the anchor and had to fuel every single supernatural creature that died pass through her. Imagine that. And then she became an alcoholic with PTSD and was drinking and then nobody addressed it because nobody cared. No, but get, and once again, this is not anything on Cat Graham. I love Cat Graham, okay? Cat Graham is amazing. As I said before, she's booked and busy with jobs, plural. And this is not anything to do with her. She pl she did the best with what she was given. And the most insulting part of it is that at the end, Bonnie left to travel, and then her ticket said she was going to Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now we're on not like that was abysmal for me. So that wasn't that wasn't even the point. So um I mean it didn't even get the point, so it's a minus a point. I don't even know how much points it has. So the vampire diaries ends with a score of minus two point five on the Kench test, which is just abysmal. But we knew that was going to happen. I just needed something to structure my rants within I just needed something to like hold my rant in place so that I wasn't talking. Now I want to get on that crusty, dusty white woman named Julie Pleck. And I'm going to say this with my chest because I mean it. Julie Pleck hates black women. <clears throat> Julie 
Black hates black people in general, but I feel like when it comes to black women, she just has this little it's it, it's it's just sprinkled in a little bit extra because there is no way that you can write what you wrote for Bonnie Bennett and about Bonnie Bennett and care about black women one bit one on the cellular level because it wouldn't make any sense it really really wouldn't and just a few things they had um Elena Gilbert kill <laughs> that black man on the underground railroad and I was like you you have you've lost your mind you've lost your mind and I'm just gonna look up something because I look I'm, I'm gonna get it because I looked it up while I was uh searching up things for this video because I was very very confused right um I googled vampire diaries writer <laughs> writers and on google if this is not accurate blame google don't blame me so the vampire diaries has 26 writers in total uh that we know of according to google and i am going to list them out for you uh i know that l j smith is the author of the regular book so we'll dis we'll disregard her for 25 but here we go and just just listen to what i am going to say hmm white woman white man 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 white man asian woman white woman white woman white woman white woman white man white man white man white man black man white man uh asian man white man white man white man you can't make this shit up you can't make this shit up you look at bonnie bennett and then you wonder how why when and where like how could this pass because you don't have any black women in your writing room you don't have any black women telling the stories of black women and then this is what you get julie pleck is not seeing the white gates you want to know why julie pleck is not seeing the white gates julie pleck had two former slave owners damon salvatore and stefan salvatore decide which black woman decide gets a chance to live choosing between bonnie and i can't remember if it was abby or and her grant or her grandmother but choosing to see which black woman decides to live by flipping a coin and they do this in an effort to save the white woman, Elena Gilbert. And after this situation, Elena Gilbert gets a letter from a white man apologizing for distress caused by her. That, that, uh, apologizing for any distress that she may have encountered during the situation. Julie Plank, go to hell go all the way to hell you are not seeing the pearly gates ma'am you are not you are not and the worst part part is uh damon i honestly can't remember if he kills Ab he killed abby right it was abby that he kills he killed abby in the place where hundreds of black witches were lynched i'm tired I, like you can't convince me that she doesn't hate black women you're just not you're just not about to do it and you know you know how I know you know things come full circle especially when you least expect them to things just like things come full circle and you're able to see things clearly because last year when black people were marching for their lives when black people were saying hey we we deserve the right to live julie pleck where is it Child. <laughs> this is what julie pleck decided to tweet julie pleck said and i quote 
I believe black women are going to save us all and I am so sorry to put that pressure on you, but white women are continually failing all of us. I hope you understand that me seeing you as a hero is not meant to add to your anxiety. Rather, it's to lift you up and celebrate you. If you don't go all the way to hell, Julie Pleck, oh my god, I'm so upset. I'm so mad because this, th these are the kinds of people that you have wanting to tell stories about black women. This is the performative activism that you see on Twitter. And then her response was, oh, well, I was just feeling emotional. I was feeling emotional, so I just decided to post that. And I didn't realize, huh? When black people are marching in the streets for their lives, when was this posted? This was posted at 2.12 a.m on July 19th, 2020, last year. So in the thick of it all, you were the one that was feeling emotional. Julie Pleck, Julie Pleck, Julie, 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 I, I just don't, I just don't. I, I still, I, the way that I wanna end this video is that I want to make a plea to Julie Pleck actually all i want to do is to kindly ask julie Pleck to please stop writing about black women we we don't want it if the representation is coming from you we really don't want it we would leave us alone please don't write about us protect black women from julie Pleck because it's it's ridiculous it is so completely ridiculous these are the kinds of people who are writing the characters that you see online people who send those kinds of tweets black women don't want to save you we don't want to save you we're out here trying to save ourselves we don't care about you julie Pleck. That's, and that's the video for today. I don't know if I'm gonna make a Vampire Diaries video. Um, it would be way more structured <laughs> than this because this was just um, a rant, as I said before. But I don't know, maybe I would. But it it depends, because then I would have to go heavy and talk deeply about the way that they just tried to like cover up the racism in Mystic Falls with the Miss Mystic Falls ball, ball that they were doing and that other stupid ball that they were doing and when uh, Stefan was wearing Yankee cult, Yankee blue, it, it's like a whole thing like I don't, that I, I if I can get through the show that it, it is that but anyways um this was an angry video but it needed to be said i needed to say it because this, it was pissing me off um but if you liked it then like the video subscribe if you want to and i will be sure to see you in the next one bye